by the way, this confidence level is expressed as one minus this weird letter. Looks like a, a almost like a fish, that thing. So it's like an X if you didn't, you know, have to draw X's real fast sometimes. It's kind of like that. Actually, it's supposed to look real pretty, like like that, but I never do it. Not that good. One minus that's called an alpha. That right there is alpha. Say alpha. 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 It's kind of fun. Alpha. Yeah. Alpha is the complement of a confidence level. Alpha is the complement of a confidence level. Now let me tell you right now, there are going to be three common confidence levels that you're going to deal with. These are typically all you deal with in real life. This is what happens. In theory, you can deal with any confidence level that you want. But normally, people stick with one of these three. So the most common are these three. 90%. Or 0 0.90? 95%? And what do you think the last one's going to be? 99. Do you think you can ever be 100% confident? No. Not unless you take the whole population. No, you're never going to be 100%. So 90% confident, or 95% confident, or 99% confident. We'll talk about what happens when you choose a different confidence level, but maybe you can picture it right now. If you want to be more confident, look up here at the board, please, for a second. If you want to be more confident with a given set of numbers, more confident is going to take that interval. If you want to be more confident, it's going to push the interval out. It's going to widen that range of numbers. By covering more numbers, you can be more confident that the actual value will fall in that range. Does that make sense to you? So, the wider you are, or you want to be, the wider the range of numbers you're going to get. Less confident, you can tighten that range. All depends on how confident you need to be for a given situation. By the way, this one uh, is the most used. Remember I gave you the example that you've actually seen confidence intervals many times before on the news? Remember talking about the news? You've heard of the news before? Oh, there's the stuff called the news. It's pretty awesome. It tells you all the new stuff that's happening. Well, a lot of times they'll give you those polls and they'll say, oh, the, um, the what should we call it? What's that called? That one thing. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the approval rating for presidents. They, they give a lot of those polls, right? And they never ask me what my opinion is. Um, even though I want them to, I would honestly do that. Have they ever asked you what your opinion is? Have they really? They've called you and asked you. Yeah. So there's one person. Anybody else? No. Ah, you're one of the few. So they typically will take a random sample of, of America and figure out what you think of the current president. And they'll say, oh, 48% uh, or 21% if it's really bad, or like 65% if it's really good, of the population is approving of the president right now. Have you ever seen those polls? Have you ever watched the news? Yeah. If you watch like political news ever, they'll give approval ratings at some point, and they'll say like it's never like 100 percent. It's never like oh everyone thinks the president's doing a great job. That never happens. It's never zero percent. Yeah, it's it's always somewhere between usually like 30 and 60. It doesn't go very much outside of that. But let's say it's it's 40 percent. Let's say it's 40 percent of the nation is approving of the president's job right now. Well, they didn't ask you, but it was a sample. Also, that's the point estimate they're giving you. Notice how they're giving you one value to represent all the population? Do you notice that? Yeah. It's not a range of numbers. However, down at the very bottom, very bottom, maybe up to the side, they have to put, if it's reputable, plus or minus. They'll put plus or minus 3%, or plus or minus 2%, or something like that. Do you, have you seen that before? Mm -hmm. Look for it next time. It'll say the percentage, but then you have to look at that plus or minus, because that's telling you the range of numbers not explicitly, but implicitly, that the actual value of the population will fall between. So even if on the news it says 40%, it's not really 40%, they have no idea. It's somewhere between 37 and 43, or 38 and 42. It's somewhere between there. How confident are they 
listen carefully, here's an interpretation for you. How confident are they that the actual value of the population falls in that range? Are they 100% certain? No. no. They're either 90, 95, or 99. If they don't tell you explicitly, it's 95. This is the most commonly used. This is what they usually give you on the news or on any sort of polling. If they're not explicitly saying 90% common level or 99, it's 95. So when you read that on the news, don't be deceived that it's that actual number. It's not. What it is is a range of numbers. So if they give you 40% plus or minus, listen carefully, they give you 40% plus or minus 3%. That means the actual value of approval would be between 37 and 43%. You sure? You sure you should, you're, you're okay with that? 37 to 43%, and they're 95% sure it's within that range. They're not even 100% sure, they're just 95% sure that the, the general population approves of the president between 37 and 43%. Do you kind of have a better picture of what that means when you watch it on the news now? That's what it actually means. Now, could you figure out the alphas from this stuff? How much is the alpha from 0.90? Good. Magic? Not magic. How is she getting point 0.1? One? One How about this one? Point zero 0.05. Not point 0.5, right? That'd be 50%. And this one? Point zero 0.01. That's right. Those are the alphas that's associated with each of our most common confidence intervals, our confidence levels. Do they like randomly pick those people or do they have like a list? It has to be random, otherwise it's not an accurate sample and none of this stuff would work. Yeah. So it, it is random typically by uh, voter registration, social security number, whatever they have at the given time. Maybe phone number, they could do that. <coughs> Let me give you an example of something I've already worked out for you. This is from the touch therapist person. So the 95% Confidence level, or sorry, confidence interval for P in our situation is this. This is how a confidence interval can look. That's one way a confidence interval can look. I'll give you another way as we move through this in just a little bit and actually do a confidence interval. But here's one way you can see a confidence interval. This says 95% confidence interval 4P is between these two numbers. Notice how the P, the population proportions right here. Here's what this is interpreted as. I want you to write this down. This says you don't know exactly what the population proportion is going to be. You don't know what if you, if you went to every touch therapist in the world, what the proportion of correct guesses is going to be. Are you with me on that? You don't know. But you're 95% sure that it's going to be within this range. You're 95% sure. There's no way to tell where it's going to be, but you're 95% sure it's between here and here. Do you follow the, the lo logic? Are you ever 100% sure? No, otherwise you'd have an infinite range. You wouldn't know. It'd be from zero to one. You couldn't, you couldn't ever get it narrower than that if you had 100%. 90, 95, or 99, that's why we have those numbers. It says, I don't know how sure I am. I'm sorry, I don't know if the actual value is in there, but I'm 95% sure that it is. So this says, I don't know what P actually is. I don't know what P actually is, but I'm 95% sure that it falls in this range. You guys okay so far? Okay. 
Now there's one more thing we need to do before we go any further, before we actually do a confidence interval. I've got to tell you what a critical value is. This is where all the work from the last chapter is going to come in. We're basically combining the ideas from chapter 5 and 6. This is it. The critical value is going to be a z-score. It's going to be the z-score that separates the likely region from the unlikely region. The parts you're going to be confident about to the parts you're not confident about. Likely versus unlikely. So a critical value is a, what was it again? A Z score. Hey, great. You know how to do, do those, right? Awesome. A Z score that separates the likely region from the unlikely region. We're going to look at those right now. That'll be the last thing that we do. Here's what you're doing with the confidence interval. You're going to be finding some range that's predicated on what, it, however confident you want to be. So in here, you're going to have the level to which you want to be confident. What normally goes in here? Well, that's going to be 90% or 95% or 90, 90%. 0 0.90, 0 0.95, 0 0.99. You with me on that? Yes, sir? Okay. Then you tell me, according to our terms, we know confidence level, that's going to go here. We know alpha, that's going to go, wait a minute, how much area is here? <coughs> and how much area is here? So I, I don't have a given confidence level, but let's say it was, <coughs> let's say it was 0.95, okay? Let's say it was 0.95. How much would go here? Would it be 0 0.05? Would it be all of it? No. Okay, well, why not? Hey, I got two tails. I got two tails there. I'm going to split up the 0 0.05 amongst two tails. And because it's symmetrical, I'm going to do it equally. So here I would have 0 0.025. That's half of 0 0.05. And 0 0.025. Are you with me on that? Or in general terms, watch the board. In general terms, I'm going to take my alpha and divide it by 2. My alpha and divide it by 2. Does that make sense? Alpha is the complement of the confidence level. <laughs> or in other words, it's the area in your tails put together. Divided by 2, you get each tail. What you're going to find then are, hey, hey, by the way, oh, so awesome. We're going to put everything together right now. Can you look up areas and give me z-scores? Absolutely.